Welcome to my second video on stoichiometry. This time we're doing moles to grams stoichiometry. And if you look up here at the top, you'll see that we wind up not just going moles to grams, but we go moles to moles and then to grams. So this moles to moles here that I pointed to, first of all, are exactly the same as what we did in our first example, this being the second example. So just like before, let's start with balancing the equation. And as we balance the equation, we'll notice that there's two carbons here on the left and one carbon here on the right. So let's make that balance. Now we've balanced our carbons. Let's look at the hydrogens. So hydrogens on the left there are four, and hydrogens on the right here are two. So we want to double our coefficient here, make that a two, so we get a total of four hydrogens on this side. And now we have a total of four hydrogens here. And to check the carbons one more time, on the right side we have two, and on the left side we have two. So our carbons and hydrogens are all well balanced. And fortunately, in this problem here, our two that we put in front of the water made an even number of oxygens. And because our oxygens over here are all by themselves, and this, the subscript is two, we need to make sure that we have an even number on the right so that we can balance with our oxygen uh, with a subscript of two and have an even number to be able to offset the even numbers on the right side. So at this point in time, let's count our oxygens. In the CO2, because we have a coefficient of two, we have a total of four oxygens there. And we add that to the two oxygens from the water, two because we have this coefficient out front. So that makes another two for a total of six. And now we go back to the oxygen on the left, and we're going to put our coefficient there. And our coefficient has got to be three, because three times the two is going to be equal to six. And now let's get rid of all these little pointers I was using, and let's go to solving the problem. As we look at what this problem is asking us to do, we're supposed to change moles here to grams over here. But the substance is different. So because we're working with a different substance, we have to be a little careful here. And we have to make sure that we are going, first of all, to the moles of the other stuff. And that's what the balanced equation is going to help us to do. And let's fix up that little two there on the CO2 up above. And now let's go and figure out what our coefficients are going to be. So let's start with the acetylene. That's right here. And that's C2H4. And we see that we have two carbons in that molecule. As we go over here, we see that we have a two in front of this carbon. And that two will balance out our carbons. And so the carbons here and the carbons on the left are good. We got the oxygens all worked up, and we're good there. So this is a balanced equation as it sits. Now let's go ahead and work the numbers and get this baby uh, going so far as making our actual calculations. So get rid of the pointers again. And... Let's start with our first fraction. What is our first fraction going to be? It's going to be 9.2 moles of acetylene, C2H4, over 1, just like always. Now, that came from up here. So let's go and now, like we did in the last problem, let's change and get the relationship of this uh, CO2 thing and the CH4 thing or acetylene. Because we have right here acetylene moles, down here we're going to also have to have 
moles of acetylene, so C2H4. Let's make this a little longer. And then we're going to look and see what we're trying to get to, and that's this guy right here. So we're going to have to have moles of CO2 up above. Now the coefficient for each of these is going to be the, or the, the number out front of each of these will be the coefficients in the balanced equation. So right here, this 2 is going to be at the top of the fraction, and down here, this CH4, the number is 1. And so that gives us everything nice for getting us into moles. Well, let's check now and see what are we supposed to find at the end. The find at the end was right here, and that is to get grams. So now we have to go to molar mass. And to do our molar mass, this is just like always, we look at how many carbons we have in the CO2 molecule, and there's only one of them. So we look at the molar mass of carbon, and that's 12, rounded, of course. And then we're going to have O2, that means two oxygens, and so that's 16 twice, 16 because that's the mass on the periodic chart. And so that gives us 2 times 16, which is 32, let's get that right here, there we go, 32, and then our total molar mass is 44 grams of CO2 is equal to uh, one mole of CO2. Now that's our fraction for the end. So let's see what we have to have where. Up here, we see that moles of CO2 is on the top, so we have to have moles of CO2 on the bottom. And we're trying to get to grams of CO2, as we see down here, so we're going to have to have grams of CO2. And that, of course, is because of the fine. So now we just pull our numbers. From right here, we're going to get our 44 to go with the grams. And the number that goes with the moles is 1. And we have just solved our problem as soon as we take out our calculator and start running the numbers. And the number that comes up on your calculator is going to be something like this. 809.6 grams of CO2. Now, let's look and see if we have the right number of sig figs. As we look at the given, we had 9.20, and I didn't put the O in here, so let's put that in to get the right number of sig figs. So this guy tells us three sig figs. This guy is an infinitely um, accurate number, as is the one down below. And so we look at those and we say those are definite numbers, exact numbers, if you will. And because they are exact numbers, they do not limit our sig fig. They can be any number. Now, we have the same issue here. This one is an uh, infinite number because it's the definition of one mole of CO2. Up here, we just have 44, so that means we're only going to be able to have, because I, I only used uh, rounded numbers for the masses, two, CO, two um, significant figures in our answer. So we look at this guy, he has four, and we can't do that. So we look at the zero, and we know we're going to have to round it right there. And so when I do that, that means we're going to have eight, one, zero. And there's no decimal on the end of that, which makes that trailing zero not significant. And we wind up with two sig figs, the right total number. And that's our grams of CO2 for our final answer. And we have just completed our next slightly more difficult problem. I think you can see a lot of this is stuff you've already done. So let's be happy that we have done something similar that makes it not so tough right now. Here's the end.